Welcome back. Uh, this is part two of this series and in this tutorial we will be talking about how to assign an attractor point to control the size of the cells dynamically. Okay, so now let's try to use an attractor point um, to change the size of this tessellation dynamically. Um, so let's go back to our front view and uh, let's have um, a point parameter and let's capture this point in Rhino here in Grasshopper. All right so uh, now let's uh, create a circle. I will use this component here and I will connect the point to establish the center of the circle and then um, I will define the normal for the circle. Okay. So now let's create a slider. And this slider basically will define our radius of influence. Um, all the cells uh, contained within this um, circle will be um, um, affected. Um, it's um, size of the opening will be changing. Okay. Now let's measure the distance between uh, the circle we just established and the centers for these cells. Okay. So if we use the panel component here, uh, we will be able to read the distances and how far each point is from our tractor point. Okay, um, uh, so now what we can do is, is basically to, um, uh, to make sure that only the points within the circle will be affected uh, and for that we will use uh, the, uh, minimum, uh, the minimum component, okay, and then we will uh, use our slider as the uh, minimum value and we use the distance um, uh, to compare with the minimum value and then we connect that here you see the maximum it can go is 11 and everything less than 11 we will have its value displayed okay let's delete that and um, let's do some math and I will um, um, I will divide um, uh, the result uh, divided by the uh, the radius of influence and let's use another panel component to read the values so you see the maximum can go as one and as we move it can goes less than one so if we connect that here instead of having the slider you'll be able to see that the, 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 the points closer to the cell have the least openings and the, the, the points that further away has the maximum kind of openings. All right, so uh, if we want to do the opposite of that, and we want that the biggest opening be closer to the point, um, so we can uh, use the subtract component. So if I plug the result uh, here, I have, um, you know, I add a value to the A parameter, uh, value of one if we plug in the panel and component you see I've kind of flipped the result so the zero the one now is um, is zero and 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 um, uh, for instance this value at index 14 is 0.98 um, if we look at this value here it's 0 0.019 and that's basically we flipped the values. However, I don't want to provide my scale com component with a value of zero because this will going to make a problem in the in the code. So if we plug this here, you'll see the code is kind of complaining and it's not working. Okay, so what we need to do is to add a value for the a parameter, um, something larger than um, than one. Uh, one point oh five uh, will work in this case. So if I plug this now. Uh, you will see that it actually working and it's kind of flipped that. 
all right and you see we have a small openings in here uh, which in my case it's okay we can make that even smaller by making, having a smaller value plugged in and if we as we move this you see it's dynamically changing and if we change the size of the radius of influence you see it's kind of dynamically affecting the entire code let's look at this here um, I'm gonna scale down my radius of influence and um, uh, I think I'm okay with, with making this result and uh, let's take this and compare it to the one produced from the previous code let's move this one here and when I look at the two results I created uh, it's gonna be these all right okay so this sums up the second part of our tutorial um, in the next part we will be discussing some of the possible approaches to prepare the digital files to uh, fabricate and assemble um, a pattern like this.